All we need to do is look around us and see that there are so many things to overthink about it. From wars over there to paying our bills over here. It seems that overthinking is so normal that to have a clear direction in our thoughts is somehow breaking a social code. We are not made for overthinking. Overthinking was meant to work much like a tool or strategy to help us figure out a solution to a problem we felt was much bigger than us. The reality is, it never operates like that. It has become something that slows our progress down immensely if not stops our progress altogether. Even our social media memes make fun of overthinking as if it is a badge of honor. It's not. At least not according to neuroscience. The prefrontal cortex is the area of the brain that is upregulated when overthinking. Amongst many roles, one important one is anticipation. Meaning, we have trained our brain to anticipate the worst case scenario based on a bundle of memories we keep repeating. Did you get that? The memories, the ones Neville encourages us to revise, are the ones that are teaching us to interpret our lives in such a way that we would rather anticipate the bad over the good. It's a habit. It can be broken. Overthinking is a form of regret. You are quite literally ruminating over the same event. In this moment, that event now has more power than you do. This perception creates an uneven dynamic between you and the object you desire. You are below it, and it is above you, in this second, as the thoughts continue to spiral, it becomes your mental god. Neville directly says we should be in control of our thoughts. Not once a day. Not every two hours. Not twelve hours. But throughout the day. Listen to what he says. If one could only control these inner conversations morning, noon, and night, and carry them right into the dream world, he would know what world he is creating. Stop for one moment and ask yourself, what am I thinking now? You are carrying on a little tiny inner speech at every moment. He radically claims we should do as a way of life. Now, as children, most of us aren't trained to think this way, so after 15, 20, 30 years of training to think one way, we have to be patient and give ourselves a level of self-love to get to this point. Create practices that are built on self-compassion, patience, and self-love. These are the anecdotes to taking this on as a new process. So, how can the Bible help us to accept our power? There is a verse that speaks of understanding. The Hebrew word for understanding means clarity. It is much more than that, there is a poetic explanation that can help with overthinking. In the Hebrew, Bina, at its root gives us the idea that clarity isn't just about how clear you are in living in the end, but, how clear you are in knowing there is a separation between you and the inner self. The word picture that is used is like how we know the shoreline is not the same as the ocean, but, they are intimately interconnected. This is the understanding we need to assist us when we are in a mental loop of inescapable thinking. So, how do you escape it? Recognize the inner self is doing this for you. The inner self is the one who has all the power. Overthinking happens because we believe the illusion of our powerlessness is over and above the power that imagination naturally holds. We are unable to determine the real from the unreal. This is understanding. It's a superpower. It's distinction. Overthinking doesn't make the distinction between powers. It makes you think the only power is in the thought itself. Your power lies beyond thought itself. So, all of this is about experience. The reason why this is important to realize this is because everything that has to do with the law, has to do with creating experiences from within. But, this is the same with imposter syndrome. You are creating an inner world where you are consistently doubting the self. You are letting your thoughts create scenes where you feel like you're just going through the motions. As if, 
you might get caught just playing a role rather than being the thing you desire. In that context Neville seems to agree with the initial feeling that we're just playing a role. He uses the phrase, though false, meaning, this thing might start like you don't feel like you are the person living in the end but continue. Overthinking keeps you from continuing. You must train your imagination to continue. Continuing in your imagination is an act of revolutionary belief in your inner power. Conti continue as the person who has everything you desire. A Catholic priest once told me that I should go and find God everywhere. The same applies here. Overthinking is just finding the same thought over and over again. Continuing is looking for God in everything everywhere you go. If you don't continue, then overthinking operates like a cushion, according to Neville, all things exist in my imagination, so I can't ask them to cooperate. If I ask them to cooperate with me, I'm sort of shifting the weight and preparing a little cushion in the event of failure. Another major contributor, could be that because there is an assumption that once we impress the subconscious, it should be immediately in the three-dimensional experience. So, rather than looking for it through the lens of already having it, we are in a state of loss. Overthinking is a form of loss aversion. So, as Neville says, we are definitely using the strategy of overthinking as a way to cushion the feeling of a possible loss. Meaning, we don't trust the inner self enough. Overthinking, obsessive behaviors, and imposter syndrome if continued become the very reasons why we feel safe with them. Rather than believing in the power of our inner selves, we think these unhealthy methodologies work for us, they give us a false sense of warped addictive safety. So, we repeat them. Notice how the methods to overcome these are the same as the ones we use to repeat them. Moving forward. Neville spurs us all on to use the power of remembrance to overcome things like fear, overthinking, and imposter syndrome. Remember what? Your power. To fear, you remember you are more powerful than it. To overthinking, you remember that you are being with all solutions. To the imposter within, you remember you are the only true God-playing human. I hope you like this video, subscribe for more such videos. Thanks for watching.